and good day. Uh, welcome to the Growth Hackers Vlog, episode five. Um, today we talk a little bit about uh, failing and winning when it comes to growth hacking, right, Odi? Yes, we do. Good morning to everyone. Yes. So a lot of things had happened in the sprint five. So we're going to go quickly through that. Um, what has happened? And first of all, uh, my name is Yussi. I'm a product evangelist and community manager at Habit, and also with me today, as always, Rodrigo. Yep. Hi, I'm Rodrigo. I'm the growth hacking marketing lead at Cloud Driven and Habit, and uh, I'm here joining you in this adventure. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, what went wrong? Um, I said mistakes are a vital <laughs> part of growth. So you make mistakes on a journey. <laughs> In, yeah. in a German saying, you say, well, we hope to get Holland Spanish. So there where you are cutting wood, there are flying chips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I would say that if, if you want a blue sky, you have to work for it. And in this time, we, you know, so we hit some some storms along the way. Yeah. So what happened? Well, I mean, I think, you know, like always, you're always testing and not always uh, like in growth hacking, in growth hacking, you're going to get uh, let's say a win. So sometimes we just didn't. We you sometimes you get loose loses. So what happened was that uh, we faced some issues with Facebook and some of our social media advertisement that we didn't expect that we were going to face. One reason was, of course, the delays due to the American election, and the other thing was that. Um, you know, when you are updating and changing websites and ma making contents, then, uh, you know, you have to see also the, how it has a ripple effect. Mm. So, concretely, I think the one of the issues with the Facebook ads that we faced, that we hadn't faced before, was that we actually got to a situation where our Facebooks, our ads were not running. And we noticed that that was actually due to two reasons. One was that Facebook when it looks at the content that it's pointing to, that it's not, let's say, that relevant, it qualifies your ad as a low quality ad. So then it's not shown to that many people. And the second one was also part of the wording in the text that as we were doing research, we found out that Facebook actually, you cannot say the word, the name of the global virus that is affecting us right now or make that direct references on it so then that also is qualified as a as a low quality ad and even though it doesn't really says that it won't show it it really puts it on the background so we yeah. had to go and fix for these specific ads the copy of the ad and then the landing page so that it would be more relevant which led then to a second situation which was the links that we used originally when we did the first post to LinkedIn, sorry, to, <laughs> to Facebook, uh, we needed to update the metadata that Facebook is pulling up the website. Meaning when you generate it, when you generate your app or your post for the first time, it pulls the information out of your website. But if you update it, then you have to manually kind of like update the thing. So two ways of doing it is like Facebook actually has a, a special page where you can go and say like, okay, refresh the metadata that you're pulling off my, off, out of my website. But if you don't update the data from your website first, it will keep pulling the old stuff. So even though you've updated the data and you're like, you have new content in your website that meets the requirements, you still have to go to the specific, uh, you know, the, at least in WordPress, there's a specific session section where it pushes the information for social media. So you have to update that. So, yeah. so it took us a while. It was like a little bit of uh, research and hunting for what could be wrong and, and looking into different places of where we could collect that information and talking to people. And, but we did it at the end, but it was a roller coaster. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, as it is, so always double, triple, quadruple check <laughs> everything. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. it's all a learning experience because otherwise we wouldn't have, you know, we wouldn't have known. And the fact that, for example, the elections were across things that meant that the the platform was overloaded and things were taking longer. And the same thing yeah. happened with with uh, our Google Ads campaigns yeah. and YouTube. That, 
you know, normally what it would take less than a day to be updated or or approved, it was taking two two days, a little bit yeah. longer. So. And I think probably also the whole ad uh, generation process was much more sensitive during the election because oh, of yeah. a lot of a lot of different um, you know ads flying around trying to catch people's attention. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah, they were really reviewing, you know, reviewing everything and making yeah. sure that, you know, you would be playing within the rules. Yeah, but nevertheless, this was the ad, so we tried this one again, um, mm -hmm. and uh, these were the the numbers of it. So we had like four, uh, 74 engagements on about roughly 6,000 impressions. That's pretty good. Um, and link clicks, we had like 46. Yeah, yeah. So link clicks on on the on the link to to get the ebook. Mm -hmm. So pretty good actually. Yeah. After yeah, yeah. Con considering the hiccups and the steps that we had to go through, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So as you as you see, if if something isn't working or you are suspecting, just go check again uh, and see. Maybe there is really some technical issue if it doesn't perform as you think it would and this was exactly our case yeah and the trick is like you have to be patient you know yeah. because there's many times where you hit the wall and feel, and feel like what am i doing wrong yeah and the matter of the fact is it's just patience it's all about it's a it's it's in the details exactly the devil lies in details yeah. uh, but then again we run also a youtube campaign yeah right mm -hmm. So yeah, that, well, like we were talking in our last print, actually, we wanted to test YouTube uh, in our engagement. Uh, mm -hmm. So we actually generated three campaigns within Google Ads. And then like we call the, these are called video campaigns. So in which one we were actually testing our how the engagement with keywords with keywords in the search. Then we were testing out the audiences, and then we were also tasting like placements. Um, I think for those that are not so familiar, well, the keywords would be kind of like just like if you were doing a Google ad that people would search for a term. But the audiences, it's more like we were actually defining based on uh, certain traits or certain practices or activities that people would be, you know, engaged in. For example, we were talking about maybe HR managers that would be one audience. Um, and then the placements, those are actual specific uh, YouTube channels that we were trying to, in, in Finland, that we were actually trying to engage with. Mm. So you actually have to go and define which channels or understand which channels you think your audience is most likely looking at in YouTube, and then you target those channels specifically. Yeah. Um, here we also had a learning curve because in the beginning, the, in the first campaign, we were actually trying to do a lot of uh, definition of the target audience, and then we realized that when you have like these um, ways in which you can define your target audience, it's not that smart to choose more than two of these uh, elements that will target your audience because it works as an and kind of like. Uh, situation in which you're saying, okay, I want someone with the, this age that is this, uh, that is maybe to this type of audience, like, um, let's say, a manager, and then he has to, and he has to type this keyword, and he has to be looking at this specific YouTube channel. So then yeah. you, you, you narrow it so little that your, your, your ads don't run as, as much as you want. And you sometimes get the, the get the situation where your ads are not showing as you want it. However, when we divided it into three and then we tested it like that, then we got some much better results, and we can actually see which kind of which one out of the three engagement types that we were trying to see was the best one. This is right. Yeah. So, yeah. So we the audience is meaning that we put a placement in a certain YouTube channel. No, uh, audience was that we were actually looking into practices or things that, yeah. are, or kind of like let's say jobs or All right. things that yeah. people like do in their mm -hmm. in in their interests. So, for example, we know that our that happy works. It's it's more for like HR, 
people that are engaged in training, certain type of managers or team leaders. So mm. we actually define those audiences there. And we got like pretty and also kind of the way that we organized our campaigns made made it so that that we were able to have a lot more impressions so then we got a lot more uh, yeah. clicks which is good if you have a, a smaller budget and you really want to start to expand your audience and you really want well, yeah. to shout to everyone like hey i'm here please take a take notice yeah, talk, talking think. about smaller budget so here the average cpv is this cost per view or or what, mm -hmm. how yeah, cost so per view. Yeah, and three cents. It's really cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and also, if you think about the view rate, it was actually quite, quite a nice view rate. Yeah. And so, that traffic also showed in our website. Yeah. So, yeah, YouTube campaigns really worth the effort. Yeah, yeah, it was really worth you know taking the time to 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 do a video, consider where you're gonna be putting it, and then like also we had some. To wait a little bit, uh, you know, for them to go live because of the of the U.S. election, but it definitely paid off. And another nice thing that we noticed is that actually uh, there's now AI involved in this kind of like services. So that actually Google and YouTube are learning the tendencies of the people that are watching or, or viewing or clicking on, on on your apps, and then automatically it kind of like optimizes it so you have better better openings and better views. So that was actually quite a nice thing. Yeah. So what was then the impact on the website traffic here? It's kind of interesting to see. Well as we were as we were looking at, we actually almost doubled the people the amount of visitors to the website. Mm -hmm. Although we have to be a little bit uh you know we have to understand these charts a little bit. <laughs> We can see, for example, we uh, the amount of users and the sessions obviously went up if we consider like the last month, even though our bounce rate number and our sessions say that it went down. Uh, if you actually look at the week when we were running the when we were running it, the bounce yeah. rate actually was better than in the overall. Sessions are so so you know I would say that there, to to say that we had a positive result, we have to look at the two angles, the two things at the same time. But I think for that period that we were running the campaign, we doubled, at least double, almost tripled our, uh, the amount of, of visitors to our website. So yeah, it's a very powerful tool to, to drive traffic to your, to your website or wherever you want to have your yeah. audience looking at. Yeah, here we can see. Yeah, that. I think for our, if we're thinking about awareness campaigns, this definitely makes a trick. Like yeah, you know, the this this did the job. And now, as always, we've tested the channel. We see what what is working, and now we have to move on to actually turn it into conversions. Yeah, exactly. And and let's see how in the next print the bounce rate bounce rate will balance out, um, because we can uh, the audience let's say more optimized coming to our to our site. Um, so let's see how it will affect now in the next in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. All right. Um, here, the, the the changes from Sprint four to five. Um, I think only what we can say that we didn't really do hacks on LinkedIn at all. Mm -hmm. So there's not much changes. Rather, they're changed. They're going down. So it's it's expected. But Facebook is like. Uh, it's really like growing at the moment. So we have uh, much more page views. We have uh, we have uh, more more post reach, uh, but we have had a lower post engagement. And I think it's also because of that. What you just said today or before all these uh, about this ad ad quality uh, mm -hmm. issue we had this print. So this is really well reflects here in in the numbers. But nevertheless. Uh, page views and post reach are, are are climbing up. Yeah, and I think that it's important to see which one is our, uh, our at the end of the day our views and posts and, and reaches. I yeah. think uh, for the next yeah, sprints that we've discussed that we're gonna we want yeah. to hit a certain number of actual uh, followers, but you know we're yeah. getting there. 
Well, of course, you want to you want to get them engaged as, as well. So let's let's see how it goes now in this sprint when uh, when we let's say have not the quality issues again. Hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, let's see how how this metric will change now in in this sprint. Okay, so to wrap up this part, uh, what went great? So the YouTube campaign went really good, and then we did some A/B testing from the targeting as well there. Yep. So that was that was very very insightful. Uh, what to improve? Uh, as already mentioned, that copy. So we shouldn't use words which are not really allowed. And again, the offer offer hacking. So I think we will maybe dedicate only one spring to some offer hacking here. But uh, goals for the next sprint is of course to improve uh, the conversion rate and then grow the Facebook audience. So what we try to do is to achieve until end of January, let's say like this, to have a thousand, a thousand likes of our Facebook page. That means mm. we can create like audiences where we can target our our ads even better. Yeah, yeah, and I think another another lesson learned now is that. Uh, you, it's not always as easy as it seems, right? When you think that, oh, now we, we're we getting there. Everything is moving like smoothly. You know, a challenge would always come across the, cor the, the corner. So so just it's, yeah, it's, exactly. it's a matter of always keep it humble and be able to understand that not always, not everything is a win, but also to celebrate the smaller wins that you get. Exactly, celebrate the smaller wins. And on that bombshell, we are finishing with part one. Thanks for yeah. this, Odi. Thanks, have a good one.